You know, this last week, preparing for a Mother's Day message, I spent a lot of time just thinking about women and trying to think about all of the things that women do. And as I was thinking about all of those different things, I came to a conclusion, church. I believe that women are ninjas. It's true. I can wear these clothes today, place them in a laundry basket, and the next day they're hanging up in my closet. They are ninjas. How does it how? At night I go to bed. Toys, dog food, crumbs, dirt, all over the floor, all over the house. The next morning, we wake up, and everything is clean. See, they are ninjas. My favorite one, I go to the refrigerator, open that thing up. Hmm, what do I want to eat? Well, I'll eat this and this. And if you have kids, you know this happens all day long. But guess what? The refrigerator never runs out of food. You know how? Ninjas. You guys, you guys, I want to let you know a little secret. NBC, we have our own ninjas as well. We do. Every Sunday you show up and this whole building is clean. The windows are clean. The trash is taken out. And guess who does it? The very same NBC ninjas. You know what, women, so many times you do not get credit for all that you do. Amen. Thank you, Jamie. I think we're going to need to do a lot of clapping this message because we want to celebrate you women. There are so many things that happen in our world, in our families, in our church that you are never recognized for. That you do without any appreciation, that you do without anybody recognizing. And so I I just want to take a moment, and I want to thank you. Thank you for everything that you do here in our church. Thank you for everything that you do for your family. Thank you for the way that you represent Jesus in this community. Today we're going to take a look at a woman from Scripture. And, and, And she's kind of a ninja. She's a woman that really not many people probably could even say her name, and not many people would know her story, but her fingerprints are all over the Gospels. She got the chance to experience some incredible things, and what I want us to see today more than anything else is that this woman had an incredible heart for Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for a day where we can just celebrate women that we could celebrate the impact and the goodness and how we have all been blessed as a result of their sacrifice, of their love. And most of all, God, their heart for you. Those of us that have had someone in our life that had a heart for Jesus, God, we have been the recipients of their faith. We have been the recipients of their obedience. We have been a recipient of their worship. And God, we praise you. Thank you for the blessing of the women of this church the women in our life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I know some of you, uh, as soon as I said last week, I sent out the email and I said somebody I've never preached on before. And so I'm sure some of you were like, okay, who could this be? And then last week I gave you a little Easter egg because my very last comment at each service was a woman from the New Testament. And so I know some of you picked that up and you're like, okay, you're going through your New Testament. You're like, who is this person that pastor's going to preach on? Well, well, the person that we're going to look at today Her name is Salome, and Salome was the wife of Zebedee. I I believe that she was a very wonderful, supportive wife, as we can see throughout the story of Salome. And and Zebedee, he was actually an affluent business owner. He owned a, a fishing business, and we can see that he was probably affluent because he had enough people that he could hire people to go fishing alongside of his sons, James and John. So yes, that's right. Salome is also a mom. She was the mom to the sons of Zebedee. Uh, Oftentimes when we read through scripture, we actually don't even hear Salome. Instead, it says the mother, the mom of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. How many women in the room have ever been referred to as Tim's mom or by your child's name? And and somebody doesn't even know your name. There we go. Hands all over the room. And, And you're not referred to by your name. You are a ninja. 
You are the mother of some child. This is kind of Salome's story. But, but Jesus comes to, to James and John, and he invites James and John to begin to follow him as disciples. And, and they begin to follow him as disciples. And I can only imagine in that moment that as a woman, Salome was, like, excited on one level because she's like, okay, my boys are going to go follow this, this potential rabbi, this potential teacher, this person that seems like an amazing person for them to be learning from. But I'm sure at some level she was like, oh, my boys are leaving home. I remember when my family dropped me off at Bible college. My, my family, they dropped me off at college, and I was so excited. I was excited to start this next season of life, step into manhood, play soccer, live at my dorm out of state. But I'm pretty sure on the drive home, my mom shed a few tears. Maybe some of you have shed a few tears as your son or daughter got married or moved out of the house or as seasons of life changed. Well, well, that's what happens for Salome, but she kind of doesn't allow this to become a negative. She actually begins to support and follow Jesus. She also becomes a follower of Jesus, and, and we can see that she welcomes him in her, Jesus and her boys into her home in Galilee, much like many of you would. Hey, come on over. Let's make a meal. Let's take care of you. We, we can see that she travels even with Jesus and with his disciples at times. Uh, as a matter of fact, we could see her footprints all over. Uh, but when I think of her, I don't know that she necessarily just saw Jesus as the potential Messiah. It, when I read through it and when I read the way it talks about her and the situations that she was involved in, I kind of think she saw Jesus as kind of like a spiritual son. She was like a, a spiritual mother providing, supporting. He was kind of the best friend to her boys. James and John, for so many of you women here today, you are a spiritual mother to so many people here in our church. You serve in NBC Kids, you serve in NBC Youth, you, you are a part of women's ministries, you are a spiritual parent, whether you have biological children or not. God is using you to, to be able to love on other children, to be able to love on other people, to be able to love on other people and represent Jesus to them. And, and I want to thank you. Thank you for being a, a spiritual mother. Thank you for speaking truth and demonstrating love and forgiveness and grace and passing your wisdom on to others. It has an impact in every life you touch, whether that's in the workplace, whether that's in our church, whether that's in our community, whether you're coaching teams. Whatever you do, women, don't, don't forget the impact that God has in and through you as you serve him and point other people towards Jesus. Uh, it's at one of these moments when, when Salome is seen and she's here and, and they're sitting down and they're all in a room together. And it's in Matthew chapter 20. And we're going to see an, an interaction that she has with Jesus. It, it's going to kind of give us a little bit of an insight into her mindset and what she was thinking when it comes to her boys and Jesus. It says in Matthew chapter 20, verse 20. Then the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. See? Like, she doesn't even get her name in there, right? But this is Salome. So Salome came to Jesus with her sons. She knelt respectfully to ask a favor. Uh, we, we could see her heart in this moment. This is a heart uh, of submission. This is a heart of humility. This is a heart of love. She comes and she kneels respectfully to Jesus who is much younger than her. Jesus says, what is your request? She replies. You got, you got to see these next three words because they help us see her mindset and what she's thinking. In your kingdom. Th this reveals something about who she believed Jesus to be. This reveals something about what she was picturing was taking place. In your kingdom. Please let my two sons, James and John, who were just mentioned, let them sit in places of honor next to you, one on the right and the other on your left. Now, I, I can't think of any passage to describe a mom better than this, right? Every mom wants the absolute best for her children. Every mom, you, they, they bring home an art project, you're like, oh, 
that is the best art I have ever seen. Oh, you're going to be an artist. They're like on the, uh, on the, like the soccer field and they like miss the soccer ball like five times in a row. And you're like, he's going to be an athlete. Dad's like, we need to get him into some private coaching. <laughs> God has just given women this ability to believe and to desire and to dream and to hope. And, and maybe that's not necessarily with your children. Maybe that's with someone else. But women, you, you do an amazing job of, of speaking into the people in your life and, and seeing the best. And, and this is what's happening here. She's got a little mama bear coming out. She's like, uh, James and John, I, I want them to have these awesome opportunities. But we cannot miss the fact that in this moment, she has said, in humility in your kingdom. She's not asking for James and John to be able to have the kingdom. She's, she's demonstrating her heart, her submission to Jesus. She has a heart for Jesus. There, there's no more trust. There's no special possession that you could give over than your own family to Jesus. That's why I love what we're doing up here with, with child dedication. To say, God, I just want to raise up. I want to lift up my children to you. I'm going to trust you because I want to have a heart for you, Jesus, and I want my children to have a heart for you as well. As, as women, I want to challenge you in every arena of your life. Point people to Jesus. People will listen to you. You have influence. There are people that when you speak into their life and you tell them about Jesus, that when you show them Jesus by the way you act, that they will begin to listen because of who God created you to be. Point people towards Jesus. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter the arena. Your calling in life is to have a heart for Jesus and to point people towards Jesus. There are special people that God has entrusted to you that you have a louder voice than anyone else in the entire world. Use that voice to point them to Jesus. The next time we see Salome, she's experiencing heartbreak. Because having a heart for Jesus does not mean that everything in life is going to go well. It doesn't mean that everything is going to be easy. Many of you here today, you know that reality all too well. Life hasn't gone the way you anticipated or wanted. Salome's been following Jesus. She's been serving him. Her boys are following him. She has these aspirations that, that Jesus is going to do these incredible things. He's going to be the Messiah. He's going to bring in his kingdom. But in Mark chapter 15, in John 19, Jesus is being crucified on a cross. This is not what she pictured was going to happen. We can read in Mark chapter 15, it says this, Some of the women were there, and they were watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. It, it, it describes they had been followers of Jesus and had cared for him while he was in Galilee. It, it explains their relationship, their heart for Jesus, that behind the scenes, these women had had an impact in the gospel going forward, in Jesus' earthly ministry. There were also many other women who had come with him to Jerusalem were also there. If we were to jump over to John chapter 19, verse 25, it listed as well, it says this, standing near the cross was, was Jesus' mother, Mary. And his mother's sister, and then Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. In this moment, she had a heart for Jesus. She was there at the darkest moment, at the most difficult time. You know what? She could have ran. She could have, like, guarded her heart and protected her heart. She could have said, I, this is just too much. I can't watch this. I can't watch Jesus being crucified. I can't watch Jesus die. This isn't the way it was supposed to go. For some of you women that are here today, your life has created a moment where today it feels difficult. It wasn't the way it was supposed to go. I know so many women in our church, that, and women and men, 
for Mother's Day is one of the most difficult days of the year because of the memories, because the person that you wished was sitting next to you is not, because of the child that you've lost or the child that you've never been given. Mother's Day isn't just this, oh, flowers and brunch and wonderful. Mother's Day is full of loss and pain and hardship. I know so many of you men who your mother is no longer with us. And so as we're here today, I, I just want us to just, just kind of sit in that for a moment and to recognize that in this broken world, there is going to be pain and struggle. And I want you to know that Salome, she's been following Jesus, and in this moment, everything is falling apart. And so if you're here today and it feels like your world is falling apart, I want you to know God is there with you. I want you to know as your church, we are here with you. If you need to cry, it's okay. I'm sure as Salome watched Jesus being crucified, there were tears coming down her eyes. But as she did this, as she walked through this pain, she didn't do it alone. We read the list, and there were all of these other women that were there with her. She, she didn't go through this alone. Th this person that she loved, this person that she had this incredible heart for, she didn't watch him being crucified alone. God in his sovereignty, God in his plan, he brought together this group of women that were all standing there together. And that's what I want for you. I don't want you to walk through your pain alone. I don't want you to walk through the sorrow alone. My desire is that, that God will bring other people alongside of you. That as you have a heart for Jesus, as we experience the difficulty of life, that there will be others that will bring comfort and hope and love into your life. No one should have to walk through the difficult days by themselves. I love our, one thing I love about our church is that we have these amazing women's life groups, these amazing volunteer teams, and wh where you can build relationships with other people. That on a difficult day, you might receive a couple text messages of someone saying, I'm praying for you. Here's a verse that can give you comfort. That as some of you walk out today, I know there's going to be somebody chasing you down from behind to give you a hug and say, hey, I know today's a tough day. I love you. I'm praying for you. See, this is what the church should look like. It should be a place where it's okay to hurt and be sad that as we experience those feelings, we're not alone, and we're still focused on Jesus. Because as she goes through this, she goes through this loss, she goes through this hardship, and with a broken heart, she's still mourning, she's still grieving, she's still feeling defeated. She and these other women, they begin to prepare the spices, and they begin to prepare the things to go and to address the body of Jesus, continuing to demonstrate their heart for Jesus, to continue to demonstrate their heart for service, continuing to move forward in their worship. And as they move forward on Saturday evening, when the Sabbath had ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. They went out and they purchased burial spices so that they could anoint Jesus' body. Again, she's giving of her own resources out of her heart for Jesus. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in white robes sitting on the right side. The women were shocked. But the angel said, don't be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Church, where you have a heart for Jesus, God sees your love. He sees your worship. He sees your sacrifice. He sees your pain. He sees your faithfulness that through all of it, you are continuing to glorify and honor him. And I want you to know, women, God has a heart for you. 
He knows the brokenness that you've experienced. He knows the family that you tirelessly serve to raise. He knows all the diapers you've changed, all the floors you've cleaned. He knows everything you've done, and God has a heart for you. And in this moment, God, in this miraculous way, allows her to experience the resurrected Lord. In this moment, God says, I've got something so special for you. I want you to know that your faith, your service was not in vain. If you have a relationship with Jesus, I believe, too, one day that you are going to see your resurrected Lord. If you have a heart for Jesus and you've placed your faith and trust in Jesus one day, you, too, are going to see your resurrected Lord in heaven. This is why this is so important. This is why if Salome was up here today, I I don't think she would tell you about any of the miracles she saw Jesus do. I don't think she would tell you about watching the crucifixion. I don't think she would even tell you about what James and John did. I think she would tell you about seeing her resurrected Lord. If you're here today, and if the person that invited you has a heart for Jesus, I think they want you to hear one thing. I think they want you to hear that Jesus Christ left the perfection of heaven to come down on earth, to live in this broken world, to experience pain and rejection, to be crucified on the cross, because God loves you. That God desires to forgive you of everything you've ever done. That God's plan has plans and purposes for your life, and that all you have to do is you can't clean things up, you can't do things better. You just take all your mess, all your brokenness, everything you've done wrong, you just take it to Jesus, and you say, here, Jesus, this is what I have. Would you forgive me? And God will will forgive you for everything you've done in the past, everything in the present, everything in the future, as you place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, as you say, I have a heart for Jesus. God will give you a home forever in heaven and purpose in this life. There is no greater message that you could hear today than that God loves you and desires a personal relationship with you. If you've not yet begun that relationship, I want to invite you right now to begin that relationship with Jesus. To say, God, would you forgive me of my sins? I place my faith and trust in Jesus. In fact, I'm going to ask you, just just close your eyes just for a moment. Don't picture me, picture your mom, your grandma, your spiritual parent, maybe the person that first shared the gospel with you right now. In this moment, what would they be sharing with you? What are the prayers that they prayed for you for years and years and years? As you're thinking about that, I just I want to give you one last invitation to in this moment just ask God to forgive you of your sins and to place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Church, if you'll look up, I, I just uh, I want to thank you. I want to thank every woman in the room for all that you've done. W- women, you are incredible leaders, you are incredible servants, you have demonstrated a heart for Jesus in so many incredible ways thank you for being a part of this church thank you for what you do inside of your family and I I just want to pray for you because normally at the end of my message I'll always give you a challenge, I'm like all right, this is what you got to go do, as you leave here today you need to do this and this and this and I'll I'll share all of these challenges but the reality is for you women (laughs) you don't need another thing to do You already do so much, so much that we don't even recognize. Today, all I want you to do is I want you to receive God's blessing. I want you to know how much you are loved, not only by us, but by God. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, would you bless every woman here today? God, thank you for their heart for you. Thank you for the way that they have served you and they point people to you. 
Thank you for the, the way that they draw together and they, they support one another through the difficult times, through the brokenness of this life. God, thank you for the miraculous moments that you show yourself to them and reveal yourself to them. Thank you for all that they do in service to their families, in service to our church, in service to our community. God, we praise you and we thank you for each and every one. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have a, we have